Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host, Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSER accredited exercise physiologist. Can I first say Happy New Year to everyone? I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas and is looking forward to a wonderful 2022. So I wanted to cover a topic in this episode that is not particularly common, but I felt it deserved a little bit of attention, and that is the topic of venous cording. Now, if you've been following my channel for a little while, you'll know that I have done a number of other videos on nerve cording or neural cording. So nerve cording and venous cording are two quite different things. But if you want to go and check out the videos I've done on neural cording, then I'll leave a little link up here now. So nerve cording is typically occurring off the back of lymph nodes being removed from the armpit and usually the presentation of nerve cording is that you get a line of tension down the upper limb following axillary lymph node dissection or even central node biopsy. So this is quite a different topic to what I'm about to talk about in this video, which is venous cording. So if you enjoy this content and you would like to see more, then please subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Give this video a big thumbs up and leave a comment in the section below if you have any questions around venous cording. So firstly, what is venous cording? So to answer that question, I just need to step back a bit and describe the different modalities where chemotherapy can be administered through IV lines. So you've got a number of options when it comes to how your chemotherapy is administered. So you can either get chemotherapy delivered through an IV line through a vein, which is usually delivered through a cannula, which is either usually done through the elbow or through the back of the hand. Then there's a pick line, which is usually a more peripheral venous access point, so usually around the arm. But then there's also another object known as a porter cap, which is where they put a line into a central vein. And this is a more semi-permanent structure, so it can be left there for a number of weeks or even months. Now, the main take-home message of this video is that there are pros and cons of each type of administration system. So this video is certainly not trying to promote porter cats over cannula, cannulas or um, pick lines over cannulas because each of them have their issues and each of them have their benefits. But one of the things I've seen clinically is venous cording and venous cording occurs following repetitive cannulas being used where venous collapse can occur and venous cording can occur or venous edema can even occur. Again, if you've been watching this channel for a little while, you'll also appreciate that one of the other topics I talk about quite frequently is lymphedema. So again, lymphedema and venous oedema are two separate topics. One of the reasons I felt compelled to do this video though is because venous oedema is often a risk in the opposite arm to the arm that you're at risk of for lymphedema. So I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. So say if you've had axillary lymph node dissection under your left arm or a central node biopsy under your left arm and you're at risk of lymphedema in your left arm. If you're having chemotherapy and the way they're administering the chemotherapy is to use a cannula through your right arm, repeated cannulas going into your right arm potentially can cause some venous collapse which could then lead to swelling of this limb because of that venous collapse. And that is coined venous oedema. So over the seven or eight years I've been doing my breast cancer lymphedema work as a physiotherapist, I've seen only a couple of cases of this. So I do want to emphasize the fact that this is an uncommon problem, but it's just a good problem to be aware of when you're making decisions around which style of chemotherapy is going to be administered. I'm just going to put a picture up of a patient with venous cording. So what you may notice is venous cording looks a little bit similar to neural cording, but often it's on the opposite limb to the side where an axillary lymph node dissection has been done or central node biopsy has been done. And you'll also notice that it looks more puckered than like a puffed up cord presenting. So usually if someone has had, say, a central node biopsy and they've had a lumpectomy and they've gone straight on to radiation, 
those patients are not going to be at risk of venous cording because they haven't had chemotherapy. And it's usually only the patients who are having cannulas put in their limb repetitively that are at risk of venous collapse and therefore at risk of venous cording or venous edema, rather than patients that have a pick line or a porter cap. So it's quite a narrow group of patients. And I should also put a very important note in here to say that just because you have chemotherapy and you have a cannula being used to administer that chemotherapy does not mean that you are necessarily going to get venous collapse, venous cording or venous edema. So this really only does happen to a few patients. So following all that information, this could be another topic for discussion with your medical oncologist or even your oncology nurses around which is going to be the best style of intravenous administration for your chemotherapy. It does not mean that one is necessarily better than the other, but it's just a really good conversation to have with your medical team, particularly in a context if you know you've already got weak veins. So if you've had venous issues in the past, then a portacath or a pick line may be a better form of intravenous administration. A portacath is a little bit more involved to be inserted. So this usually requires either a general anesthetic or low level anesthesia. So it's done in a hospital under an operation and it usually requires a surgeon or a radiologist to place the portacath. And there are risks with portacaths such as blood clots and the line becoming blocked. The portacath sometimes can also be quite uncomfortable if someone gives you a firm hug because usually they are positioned up underneath the collarbone. So like I said, there's a lot of things to be discussed with your oncologist or your nursing team as to which is going to be the best system for you personally. So what are we actually looking out for if we're worried about venous cording or venous edema? So we really only are focusing, like I said at the start of this video, on the arm that is having chemotherapy administered. And the things that you're looking out for are certainly indentations that look like lines. So I'll just pop this picture up of the venous cording again so you can see what I'm talking about with that indentation line from the cording. If you've got a general ache in the arm or if you can visibly see veins sort of becoming prominent near the surface of the skin that weren't there previously. You may also notice swelling of the arm. So if you're experiencing anything that's a recent change and you're having chemotherapy and your chemotherapy is being administered through a cannula, then discuss these changes with your oncology nurses and or your medical oncologist because it might be the start of venous cording or venous edema. The other little sign of venous cording is literally a prominent vein particularly popping up in the crease of the elbow. So unfortunately I don't have a photo of that so I apologize because I have had a few patients with it but sometimes you can get quite a prominent vein appearing in the elbow crease. Now if you do get venous cording one of the things I have found that can be quite helpful to reduce the ache in the arm is a light compression sleeve. So nothing too heavy as far as compression is concerned but something like this is quite relieving for most people who have venous edema or venous cording. The problem I see that's most prominent with venous cording and venous edema is that it causes a dull ache and it just becomes quite an annoying symptom to have to deal with on top of everything else that you're going through with your breast cancer treatment. So a light compression sleeve, and this particular one is a compression class two. This is a circular knit sleeve rather than a flat knit sleeve. And I find these sleeves quite helpful to reduce the ache and the swelling, of course, that comes with venous edema and the soreness that comes with venous cording. Another garment you might like to consider is a night garment. And Haddon and Healthcare, which is a company that I've promoted quite a few times through this channel, but also a company that I've worked with for quite a number of years now, have developed an amazing nighttime garment called a Comfy Wave. So I'm just going to hold a um, a, an example of this garment up and I will actually be doing a separate YouTube video on this garment because these garments are game changers as far as I'm concerned not only for things like venous edema but also for lymphedema and fibrosis but I'll do a separate video on these garments but this is a nighttime garment so these are designed to be worn overnight or if you're just relaxing around the home but this is another option to reduce the ache and the swelling 
in an arm that's potentially got venous cordial or venous edema. Another really simple treatment technique you can use if you do have venous cording or venous edema is self-lymphatic drainage massage technique because ultimately at the end of the day this is still a limb that has a little bit of swelling on it and to perform self-lymphatic drainage which is just the massaging technique that we use to clear lymphatic fluid this is another option for treatment. If you're not sure on how to perform self-lymphatic drainage massage, I'll just leave a link to one of my original videos that I did quite a while back on how to perform self-lymphatic drainage massage. So you can go and check that out if you need to. I'm sure there's a few people out there wondering if I prescribe nerve stretches in the same way that I do for neural cording, um, if I give that out for venous cording. And the answer to that question is, Yes, I have tried neural stretching on venous cording, but unfortunately I haven't found it particularly successful because I think the, the root of the problem with venous cording is completely different when it comes to neural cording. So what I have found as the most effective forms of treatment is compression and certainly self-lymphatic drainage. And of course, prevention is better than cure. So this is one of the reasons I felt really compelled to do this video for you guys because I think uh, venous cording and venous edema, albeit not common as a problem from chemotherapy, it does warrant a short discussion with your medical oncologist or your oncology nurses as far as how good your venous system is before you start chemotherapy. So if you're really aware that you've got weak veins or if you're really concerned about the risk of venous cording, venous edema, or just venous collapse in general, then that may be where a PIC1 or a Portacath is going to be a better choice of IV administration. I think one of the saddest things when I see people with venous edema secondary to venous collapse from chemotherapy is that often the patient is at risk of lymphedema on the opposite upper limb. So if you've got a swollen arm on the opposite side, to the side that you're at risk of lymphedema, this can be quite distressing for the patient. Um, again, it doesn't happen that frequently, but I have had a couple of patients who've had venous edema on one arm and early onset lymphedema on the other. So again, have a discussion with your medical oncologist or oncology nurses about which is going to be the best system of IV administration for you. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you've gained some really good information on venous cording and venous edema. If you have any questions on these topics, please leave a comment in the section below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Look forward to seeing you next week with another video. I'm Jen McKenzie, the Breast Cancer Physio, and I'll see you next time.